Another important property of chiral molecules is their ability to rotate plain polarized light. This is called optical activity. Now, when you're looking at chiral molecules, they're able to rotate plane polarized light in one of two directions, clockwise or counterclockwise. The way this is determined is experimentally. So as you can see in this diagram, when you want to measure the optical activity of a compound, you will first take regular light that is unpolarized. You would pass it through a polarizer to get light that is polarized in one plane. You would then pass the plane polarized light through your sample, which contains your compounds of interest. And then you're going to measure what is the angle of the plane polarized light once it passes through your sample. If your sample rotates the light clockwise, then we say that the molecule is dextrorotatory, which is often denoted with a lowercase c or a plus sign. If your molecule instead rotates the light counterclockwise, then your molecule is levorotatory, denoted by, by lowercase l or a minus sign. Now, this property of optical activity is a property intrinsic to the molecule. So as a result, we can quantify that using what is called specific rotation. Specific rotation is defined as the amount of rotation per concentration and path length. The reason why you have to set these two values, concentration and path length, is because these two values will affect the amount of rotation, and that's not dependent on the specific property of the molecule. You can imagine, for instance, if you can have two mixtures of the same compound, one at a lower concentration and one at a higher concentration, and the one at a higher concentration would rotate more light. Same thing for path length. The greater the path length, the more molecules that your light has to pass through. So again, you're going to get more rotation. So by normalizing for both concentration and path length, you're able to get a consistent value that is intrinsic for each molecule. So again, the specific rotation, which is alpha in brackets, is calculated by looking at the observed rotation and dividing by the concentration of the solution and the path length. This value is actually pretty helpful because it allows us to calculate what is called the enantiomeric excess. Enantiomers are isomers that are non-superimposable mirror images of each other. They have equal but opposite optical activity, which means if one rotates light clockwise 37 degrees, then its enantiomer will rotate plain polarized light counterclockwise at 37 degrees as well. Same magnitude, but opposite directions. Now, when you have enantiomers in, in a mixture with each other, they don't necessarily have to be mixed in equal quantity. So there's a way for you to determine the relative quantity of each enantiomer using this equation for the enantiomeric excess, which is equal to the observed rotation times 100 and divided by the specific rotation. So to illustrate how this works, let's take a look at an example. In this example, we're going to have two enantiomers. The R enantiomer is going to be dextrorotatory, rotating light clockwise by 25 degrees. Uh, by 25 degrees. The S enantiomer is going to be levorotatory with a specific rotation of negative 25 degrees. In this case, we're going to have a mixture of enantiomers that has an optical activity of positive 10 degrees, and we want to know how much of each enantiomer is present. Now, the first thing you should know from this question is that the optical activity is not zero. If it were zero, it would mean that you have equal quantities of both enantiomers present. But since it's not zero, that means we have more of one enantiomer. In this case, since our optical activity is positive, that would imply that we have an excess of the dextrorotatory R enantiomer in this situation. So we can calculate what is the enantiomeric excess of the R enantiomer. So using this equation, the enantiomeric excess is equal to the observed optical activity, which was positive 10 degrees, we would multiply this by 100 
And we can divide this by the specific rotation of the enantiomer in excess. So the positive 25 degrees. And when you do this calculation, you're going to end up with a value of 40%. That means we have an excess of 40% of the R enantiomer. It also means that the remaining 60% of molecules in solution is equal between the two. So that means you have 30% of the S enantiomer and 30% of the R enantiomer in the equal amounts. And in total, it would mean that you have 70% of the R enantiomer and 30% of the S enantiomer. So we can see now how we have a 40% excess, essentially 40% more of the R enantiomer than the S enantiomer in solution.